This is section 4.4, Indeterminate Forms and L'Hopital's Rule. Our second content, obje content objective is to use L'Hopital's Rule to compute limits of these indeterminate forms, 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, infinity times 0, and infinity minus infinity. When you're done, I'd like you to be able to describe what must be done to indeterminate forms of these two types before you can apply L'Hopital's Rule. Before we get to L'Hopital's rule, I want to examine two functions for which this limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x yields the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Notice that this can only occur if both f of a and g of a both equal 0. That means graphically that f of x and g of x will intersect the x-axis at the same place when x equals a. The second thing we want to assume is that both functions have derivatives at a. So in other words, this g prime of a is not going to be 0, and neither of them will be undefined. To illustrate the subsequent development, we're going to use the functions f of x equals x squared minus 4, which is a parabola that opens up, and g of x equals x minus 2, which is a line with slope 1. Notice that if we examine the graphs of both of them, both of them will intersect the x-axis when x equals 2, because 2 minus 2 gives me 0, and 2 squared minus 4 also gives me 0. Also, when we look at the picture, you'll see that they both have non-zero slopes when x equals 2. Now let's consider this limit. It gives me an indeterminate form, the 0 over 0, and we can evaluate this limit using old techniques from chapter Remember in chapter 2 when we had a 0 over 0, our first line of defense was to try and factor and get rid of the problem that was causing us to divide by 0. So if I factor this x squared minus 4 into x minus 2 and x plus 2, we can see that the x minus 2's will cancel and we'll be left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2 and then 2 is no longer a problem. We plug it in and get 4. Now this one is an easy one that we can use our chapter 2 techniques on. The problem is, is we're going to run into these types of indeterminate forms where we cannot use the techniques from chapter 2. So this L'Hopital's rule gives us another tool that we can use to evaluate limits when we don't have a calculator. So to do that and to kind of motivate it, we're going to look at this same problem that we know how to do with chapter 2's techniques and we're going to look at it a new way. Here's that x squared minus 4, the parabola opening up. And here's the x minus 2, the line with slope of 1. Notice they're crossing the x-axis at the same point, and that they both have tangent lines associated with that x-coordinate of 2. And g, which is the bottom curve, does not have a 0 slope at 2. What I want to do is I want to zoom in really far. And if I zoom in far enough, we notice that the differentiability, or the local linearity, of both of these curves makes it start to look like a line. And if you remember section 311 and the discussion we had about differentials, you can see that the actual change in the function values going from 2 to 2 plus delta x, so here would be our change in f, and here would be our change in g, then that can be approximated by the differentials df and dg. Now furthermore, since the original function values on both curves are both 0, the actual change will be the same as the new y-coordinates themselves. So let's look at that again. Here is our function f of x, so this is that parabola that we've zoomed in really close on, and here's our line, and we are saying that here's our initial function value for both of them. So the change in f, the actual change value, will be this y-coordinate minus 0, and this y-coordinate minus 0 will be the actual change in g. Now we're interested in the limit of f of x over g. So that y-coordinate is actually the same as the change in the y-coordinate, since the original y-coordinate was 0. And we learned in section 311 that I can estimate that actual change with the differential. So here I've got the y-coordinate is the same as the actual change in the function, which in turn is estimated with df. Now what happens is as dx gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and x goes closer and closer to 2, then the differential estimate of change is actually going to equal the actual change. So what that means for us here is that I can replace f of x with df, and I can replace g of x with its differential dg.
And if I divide both of these by a dx, then we end up getting the limit of the derivative of f over the derivative of g. That means I can take the derivative of this x squared minus 4 and the derivative of the x minus 2, and I'll get 2x over 1. Notice this no longer has a problem. I can plug the 2 in and get a 4. So I got the exact same answer using this method as I did when I did my old factoring method. And it turns out that this method here is far more flexible. We can use it in many more scenarios that we can't use the factoring in. This method is called L'Hopital's Rule. The conditions of L'Hopital's rule say if f of a is the same of g as g of a and both of them are equal to 0 and the derivatives at a exist on both curves and that denominator's derivative is not 0, then the limit as x approaches a of f over g is exactly the same as the limit of the derivative of f over the derivative of g as x approaches a. In other words, we'll get f prime of a over g prime of a. If a limit satisfies the conditions of L'Hopital's, then the limit of the ratio of the y-coordinates is the same as the limit of the ratio of the derivatives. For example, let's look at this first one. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get a 1 minus a 1, which is a 0, and on the bottom I'll get a 0 plus a 0 squared, which is a 0. So that is a L'Hopital's candidate because I got 0 on both. I have derivatives at both, and if I take the derivative of this one, I get a 1 plus a 2x, which is not going to be 0 when I plug in 0. Because of that, that means I have a candidate for L'Hopital's, and I can write the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the cosine of x over x plus x squared is going to equal the limit as x approaches 0 of those derivatives. So the derivative of the top is a positive sign and the derivative of the bottom is a 1 plus 2x. If I now plug in 0, I get a 0 over a 1, which is not an indeterminate form, and I get 0 as my answer. If I look at example 2, Again, I will plug in my 0 to verify that it works for L'Hopital's, that it's a candidate. I would get a 1 plus 1, which is a, or excuse me, a 1 plus 0, that's a 1. Minus a 1 gives me a 0. Minus a 0 over 2, that's still 0. And on the bottom, I also get a 0. So because of that, L'Hopital's works. And I can write the limit as x approaches 0 of the original will equal the limit of those derivatives. If I take the derivative of the top one, I'll have a 1 half times a 1 plus x to the negative 1 half minus a 1 half, and on the bottom I will get a 2x. If I now plug in 0, I'll get a 1 half minus a 1 half, that's still a 0 on top and a 0 on the bottom. So I still have 0 over 0, which means I can apply L'Hopital's again. So if I apply L'Hopital's again, I'll be looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of the top, I'll move this 1 half in front. That'll give me a negative 1 fourth of the inside unchanged to the negative 3 halves times the derivative of the inside minus 0, and on the bottom I'll get a 2. If I complete this, plug in my 0, I get a negative 1 fourth over a 2, which is a negative 1 eighth. With example 3, if I try to compute this limit, I will plug infinity in, and I get an infinity squared, and a infinity plus another infinity, I'm ending up with infinity over infinity. Infinity over infinity works just like 0 over 0. It's still an indeterminate form and it is still a fraction, so I can rewrite that limit as the limit of the derivatives. If I take the derivative of the top, I get a 2 times a 3x minus 5 to the 1 power times the derivative of the inside. And on the bottom, I will get a 4x plus a 1 over x. If I try to plug in very large numbers now, I'll get infinity on top and infinity plus something really close to 0. So I'm still getting infinity over infinity. Because I get infinity over infinity again, I can apply L'Hopital's again. Take the derivative of this, I have a 6 times, that was the 2 times the 3, and then I have the derivative of this inside, which is 3, 
And on the bottom, I'll get a 4 minus a 1 over an x squared. If I let x go to infinity now, this piece will go to 0, and I'll be left with an 18 over 4, or a 9 halves. If I look at example 4 now, this one is a different form because if I plug in my infinity, I'll get an infinity times the sine of 1 over infinity, which is the sine of 0. So this one is looking a little bizarre. This is that infinity times 0. And what you need to know is that L'Hopital's only works if we have a fraction of two functions. So that means I have a choice. I can either leave the x on top and get the sign on the bottom by putting its reciprocal down there. Or I can leave the sign on the top and move the x to the bottom. Now each of these would provide either a 0 over 0 or an infinity over infinity. This one will give me an infinity over infinity. This one will give me a 0 over 0. And that means each of them are eligible for that L'Hopital's rule. However, one of them is much simpler than the other. And if I look here, we can see that the inside of this function is going to have the same derivative as this denominator, so this one will be simpler. Over here, it might still work, but it will require a lot more algebraic work. So I'm going to stick with this one, and if it doesn't work, then I'll loop back and try and do the harder version. I have the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm going to verify plugging in infinity gives me a sine of 0, which is 0, over a 0. So it satisfies L'Hopital's, and I'm ready to do the derivative. What this tells me is I take the derivative of the top, which is the cosine of the inside unchanged, times the derivative of the inside over the derivative of the bottom. Notice since those had the same derivatives that they will cancel, and now when I plug in infinity, I'll get the cosine of 0, which is just a 1. That was much simpler than trying to work with this one. So when you encounter these infinities times zeros, you want to make sure that you look at your two options. You can leave the first factor on top and do the reciprocal of this one on the bottom, or vice versa. Leave this one on top and do the reciprocal of the first one on the bottom. And you need to decide which one you would rather take the derivatives of and which ones are going to simplify for you. And it's always just going to be trial and error. You can work with both and just see what works best. Okay, with our final example, we have a limit as x approaches 1, and if I plug in 1, log natural of 1, if you recall, is 0. So 1 divided by tiny, tiny, tiny positive values or tiny magnitude negatives is going to make this either shoot up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity. So regardless, this is going to have a magnitude that is very, very large. Same thing over here. If I plug in a 1, I will be dividing by 0 again. So I'm left with this infinity minus infinity indeterminate form. We have to remember that L'Hopital's only works if I have a fraction. If I have one function over another function, and both of those functions approach 0 at the same spot. So in order to work with this infinity minus infinity, I need to create a single fraction out of it. So to do that, I'm going to get a common denominator. This first fraction needs an x minus a 1, and the second fraction needs an ln of x. So I'll put those on top, and then on the bottom, I'll have an ln of x times an x minus a 1. Now I check. If I plug in 1, I get a 0 minus 0 gives me a 0. And if I plug in 1 on the bottom, I'll get a 0 times a 0, which is also 0. So it fits L'Hopital's, and I can apply L'Hopital's rule. The limit as x approaches 1, the derivative of the top will be 1 minus 0 minus 1 over x, and the derivative of the bottom, I will have to do the product rule. So I'll have the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. If I now plug in 1, I'll get a 0 on top, and I'll get a 0 plus a 0, which is 0 on the bottom. So that means I can apply L'Hopital's rule again. Well, doing that, it looks a little messy. So before I take the derivative, I'm going to try simplifying.
it looks like I have an x minus a 1 over an x. Got a common denominator here. Rewrote that as x over x. And then here I'll have an x ln of x plus an x minus 1 all over x. Again, I got common denominators. Notice that these x's will cancel. And I can rewrite that as the limit as x approaches 1 of an x minus 1 over an x ln of x plus an x minus 1. Plug in 1 just to double check. I haven't compromised my L'Hopital eligibility. And I see that I have a 0 over a 0. So it still is eligible for L'Hopital's. And it's much easier to take the derivative now. The derivative of the top gives me 1. The derivative of the bottom, again, I've got to do the product rule here. So I'll have the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first plus derivative of x is 1 and derivative of 0, or negative 1 is 0. If I finish up now and plug in my x equals 1, I'll have a 1 on top. And this will cancel and give me a 1 plus a 0 plus a 1 gives me a half. So in this particular case, an infinity minus infinity gave me a 1 half. The last thing I want to caution you against is doing L'Hopital's when you do not satisfy the conditions of L'Hopital. Remember that your original function, your original quotient, has to look like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. If it ever stops looking like that, you need to stop applying L'Hopital's. People get really L'Hopital happy and they want to just keep doing it over and over because it's really easy and it makes it seem like limits that used to be hard get really simple. But you want to avoid overusing it. Don't use this method unless you satisfy the conditions.